Donkey Kong. The hoo ha ha Ape. Hello. Let's get this all out of the way. And look at that, this is, this is not fancy, I made an overlay finally. I didn't have one last time. No. Alright, uh, before I start... Donkey Kong. Which is, the, which is the, which is the main show. Um... I wanted to show something off if I did. So, um, last night in Animal Crossing I cut my first... Colon can canth word. That, that, that fish, that one, which is the rare fish, and, um, CJ was in town, and if you don't know who he is, um, if you can sell fish to him for a higher price than they're actually worth, but I didn't have this in the museum yet, it, like, I had to break my heart, give this, like, blathers, instead of selling it off for money, I, I, I had to do the right thing, but then, fucking, today... I got two more in a row. <laughs> These two images are back to back. <laughs> and I was just, I was just saying funny that happened. All right. Let's start Donkey Kong. I'm very aware. Um streams that I do that tend to get the most like views and stuff is like I need 70 lives Jesus um are my more goofy ones where I play like happy feet or whatever and I'm glad everyone who's here is here to watch me play Donkey Kong because I like I like playing something isn't bad once in a while I think I deserve to play a good game Maybe several good games. Alright, um... In case you weren't here last time, I'm not going for all the puzzle pieces, just just kind of as a time-saving thing. I'm gonna get all the Kong letters to get all the levels, but, um... I am not gonna get all the puzzle pieces. I have before, but... <laughs> I don't want to keep replaying levels if I miss one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have an Animal Crossing layout I made, too. And hopefully... When I play Animal Crossing again soon, I will be able to show off the Animal Crossing layout. Anyway, Monkey Kong. This is the dicks level. They want us to use our dicks. I, great job on that wording already. I got to a great... Off to a fucking rocking start. I think this is the first Rambi level. Oh, it is. A common, um... One of the very... Great job, I got already. One of the very few uh, complaints people tend to have in this game is, um... Rambi is the only animal buddy in it. And he's only in a few levels. He's like in, I think like, starting this world is like one Rambi level per world. Like you get one little Rambi level per, um, I can see that, like, wanting more Ram. I, I don't mind it personally. I think the gameplay itself is so solid. I don't mind just having Rambi. At the very least, I think On Guard could have been cool, maybe just on guard and Rambi. There are three Rambis in the game. Okay. I think maybe on guard for some underwater levels would have been cool, but otherwise, I think the main platform in this game is so solid, I don't really mind it. Animal buddies being a little de emphasized. I think they work better in the original ones than they do here. But I'm not gonna discount people who like like the animal buddies and want more of them. I just don't. I just think with how this game is, I don't. I don't really. I don't really need a bunch of animal animal friends. Although I do enjoy Rambi's presence. I said for years. I always thought the Donkey Kong assist trophy in Smash should have been Rambi. I think that could have. But that, I guess like Go Go, whatever it's called from Pokemon, basically does what Rambi would have done. You kind of ride around on him. But I like Rambi more than I like Go Go. <laughs> my absolutely blistering take. The fucked up thing about Adam Guard is there's zero evidence that his every appearance is actually a transform lanky con. <laughs> you got a point. Makes me, making me think. I talked about this last week, but one of my favorite things about this game are the world themes in this game are outstanding. 
like, there's, like, no kind of conventional, like, world theme in this. There's no, like, generic lava. Like, the most generic it gets is, like, I guess technically the last world is, like, just a, kind of is an ice world, but it's, like, a very, very interesting take on an ice world. Because it's Donkey Kong's Island frozen over, it's not just, like, snow level. And then every other world of this game is, like, a like, really unique theme. Like, World 1's, like, a plane crash. World 2's, like, a windmill theme. Next world's Vanna. I, I guess the water world's, like, the most generic, I guess I would say, actually. It, the water world's kind of... But even then, it's, like, a very... It's a very gorgeous water world, at the very least. And this game, um... This, is, this game has very good swimming controls. I talked about this, too, last time. I've come to the conclusion... Most water levels in games aren't actually that bad. It's just kind of Mario 2D ones that kind of suck. Oh! Because uh, most games like this tend to have, like, very solid... They have a good grasp on, like, water controls, like Rayman and Donkey Kong. Mario's is kind of the only... Platforming, one of the, what is like kind of like, I'm warning this great. Doesn't one of the few that doesn't have like really solid water controls. So like, in Mar, in Donkey Kong and Rayman, they kind of like elegantly swim. Mario kind of goes up and down. That's really all like. Rampy, no, that's all he can do. Rampy. I like the Rocket Barrel songs, but I can also understand that perspective. I don't know what I would say is my favorite world theme. I like the factory one a lot, the, the juice factory, because I like the kind of story progression of it, like how you see like every process of like them making the thing. And the the Savannah world has like a story throughout its levels too. We'll get to that when we get to the next world, but hard to say. I like a lot of the worlds. I lost Rambi again. A lot of the worlds do have kind of like a. This silly as it sounds like a story progression to them. Like, things happen between levels, like, change level design, and I think that is very neat. I can't- when we get to Savannah, I want to talk about, like, that, because it's so cool, like, what they do. Because, like, I, the levels all kind of lead into each other, and I think that is incredible. Got Rambi. I miss I miss Dixie though. I think Dixie should be in playable and more stuff. That's my hot take. Dixie um is playable in uh Mario the Mario baseball games. I think she should be in more. I like when I like I'm not one of those huge like oh Nintendo needs to put every obscure Mario character I like in every spin-off type people. But I like when the- I guess I'm biased. I like when the Donkey Kong characters appear a lot. I like when Diddy and Dixie and Funky all show up to the party. I'm glad Diddy started- because Diddy was, um... You just noticed the stream title. Uh, Diddy was kind of missing from Mario's spinoffs for a while. I'm, I need to focus. I want to get the DK. I didn't get the DK. <laughs> Diddy was kind of missing from Mario's spinoffs for like a good while. He wasn't in- he was pretty much missing in every Wii U Mario spinoff. And then come the Switch era, he's back in everything. He's in Aces, he's in, um... Super. And I'm sure he'll continue to appear more. He's not in Kart, though, yet. Don't worry, though, he's, just, he's, in, he's in Mario Kart Tour. He plays Diddy Kong in Mario Kart Tour. He plays Pauline and Birdo in Mario Kart Tour, but nowhere else. But as they uh, put Diddy in more stuff, I think putting Dixie and Funky and stuff would be- and Cranky, the whole gang. I've been kind of wondering, um, if, like, the huge, like, reaction demand for K. Rool and Smash would affect, like, other games anyway. I think if they are do make, like, another Donkey Kong game in the future, I think K. Rool will absolutely be in it, but, like, in terms of, like, spin-off stuff, like Mario stuff... I'm always wondering if, like... We'll start putting K. Rool and stuff after they see the see like the demand. This is a very good level. I, I'll talk about some stuff in a minute. I like getting cranky when I can. 
I think Cranky, I mean, <laughs> Cranky, well, Cranky, of course. I think K. Rool being like a Mario Kart or Golf or something would be fun. I've been wondering that, like, because he was so highly, he got into Smash because he was so highly demanded. Anyway, um, look at this. This is one of my favorite things. Every single platform in this game is contextualized. Like, these leaves aren't just, like, falling from nowhere. Like, they're coming out of these trees. These, like, pipes that are blowing wind up, there's little owls in the background blowing them up. And that is wonderful. Like, everything is fucking contextual. I, this is the shit I live for. And getting hit. Good job. Being hard. Pitied me, like, immediately. I think it's so cool. Like, this stuff. I don't- Again, I'm gonna minimalize ragging on new Super Mario Bros. as much as I can. But again, whenever I play Donkey Kong, or like Rayman or so, even Sonic, even though I don't like Sonic Mania that much, I kind of see, like, this kind of stuff. Like, man, I wish- I wish the 2D Marios had as much passion. I guess that's the bad word. I, there's probably lots of effort and passion, but the I guess creativity as like the 3D Marios do. Like, can you imagine, like, a 2D Mario with, like, the creativity of, like, Odyssey in it? But that, that, that's, well, not right now. That's enough new Super Mario Brothers bashing for, for one day. God, you look, look at this, hold on, hold on. Look, see the little, see the, see the owls blowing on the pipes in the background? They have little houses, too. They got... They not only not only are like these pipes contextualized in terms of, like why they're like they exist. The thing that's making them exist in the background has extra details, and I died because I was because I was, cause I was so excited about that. <laughs> anyway, um. I wrote, this is gonna sound dumb, but I write stuff down to talk about on stream. I, 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 I follow a mindset like, you know, I could talk about this on Twitter and get like randos bothering me about it. I could just talk about it on stream with a few people. So, so I wrote some things down and I have bad news. Um, this is the stream where I'm gonna talk about Steven Universe for a bit. <laughs> and I, <laughs> this might be bad news, but it's mostly mostly positive. Uh, hold on one second. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. There was something. I had to go check it. Anyway, um, bad news. I had to go catch her fridge. Well, I mean, I'm with Cranky right now. That makes sense. He's got walnuts, peanuts, and pineapple shells in his fridge. Pineapple smell. I, I always get smells and shells confused. They sound similar, they're right next to each other in, in the hit song. Grapes, melons, oranges, and coconut shells smell. It's coconut shells and pineapple smells. You have an opinion on Cranky's Dentures gun? Yes. I think he's- I think it's valid and he should use it in his upcoming DLC appearance in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I think Cranky's the only one you can use to beat that guy, actually. I don't know if anything else in the game can get that dude. Pineapples don't have shells. You expect- <laughs> you expect me to remember something as basic as that. me to be able to remember pineapples don't have shells. When I'm in the moment of singing the DK rap with all the passion in my heart, 
I don't have time to think about that. I think Cranky's the only one who can hurt that guy at the least. I might be wrong about the previous guy, but I think no one else can, like, hurt him, I think. Not that you kind of want to kill him. He's, that enemy's the only a platform. He's Cranky again. I always think it's funny when, like, game design-wise, enemies are used, like, place in a level just to be, like, a platform. Like, imagine, like, your existence of being, like, to be jumped on. There was an enemy right there. Oh, no. Lost Crank. There's Doctor. There's Mr. Chops. I think you can stun. Okay. I was chat message from earlier. I think this guy blows. Yeah. He blows. Yeah. That's it. That's all he does. AOGNG Kong. Watch my chops. It's no joke that Daga spoke. Just watch my chops. You must never speak a word. Uh, talking dog. How absurd. EKB like go grandpa go. I think Cornel and Bernie is a show that exists to be on top 10 cartoons you forgot list. Except that it wouldn't be, because whenever people make top 10 cartoons you forgot list, they don't ever do interesting like cartoons people actually forgot. It's like, nobody remembers this one. It's like My Life as a Teenage Robot, which is a show most people who like animation know about. Cornel and Bernie was pretty forgettable. Take it back, it has the best theme song in all of France. That's where it came from, I think. I literally only remember the theme song. There's, a, there's lots of shows like that, I think. Like, Undercats. Oh, this is the... This is the good level, I think. I think this is the level that has two secret exits, if I remember. Look at that, someone's playing arms. This level's cool. Oh yeah, no, this one's cool. I remember seeing this level in, like, CTF song. I've never seen this trailer... I'm just, this level in trailers a lot, I think. I'm being, like, blown away by it. Just to get like more of that contextualizing stuff, like every plot you see, all these platformers, platforms being like made in front of you. That is the sickest shit. The team for this game was like, here's the sawmill themed level. We're gonna go off the shits with it. I love the like. The music is dynamic too, because it kind of gets a little more aquatic sounding during like the water parts. It's great. And then it gets a little more energized when you're inside the building, I would say. There's two secret exits to this level. I think one's coming up. I'm gonna get the one later in the level first, maybe. Like get all the Kong letters at least. This is the only rap all I think so. This is the bonus one I'm forgetting about. Um, it uses the mechanic as well. Look, you can kind of jump along with the rhythm. It's great. I see wood, and I'm like, I'm the craft animal crossing equipment with wood. This one's always hard. Is this only, this only have one actually? Oh, you know, I missed the secret exit anyway. Oh, <laughs> this level has two, then I missed one. I might be thinking of a different one of those two. I think that's a later one actually, yeah. It 
it's Twilight Terror. That's okay. I figured. I know one of the minecart levels has two. I just feel like they thought it was this one. I don't. This one's pretty fast to get through. I don't mind going through it one more time. We can go visit Funky real fast though. No return policy on these barrels. Donkey do what I've had them for years. I wanted to say the line where he says it's okay, I get lonely too sometimes. How does he say that? How do you like get that line? Is it a cranky barrel or like a, just a barrel in general? By one. No, no, throw the barrel too hard, donkey dude. Don't want to break something on the old ape. Hey, bro, the surf out there looks excellent. Funky Kong's the best character ever made, I think. They did a good job making Funky Kong exist. Is Donkey Dude specifically referencing the show? Ooh. I wonder. Because that is something Funky says in the show a lot. He says, Donkey Dude! You got it all wrong. Like, your head is screwed down like you're singing a song. It's, it's dangerous. Congo Bongo Ireland's headed for doom. I got it right. I said, <laughs> said it right. I'm glad they knew I was gonna hit and put that there for me. The character replaces Funky in Funky Kong mode does say Banana Slamma. You're right. And I think there was a time on the Nintendo of America Twitter where they did like a make your Kong name thing. I believe one of the names was Bluster, so they're aware. They know. Nintendo can pretend they don't know about this, but they do. I'm gonna be here every day waiting for them. People can get mad at me all day. Just smash the wiki, get mad at me as much as they want. Donkey Kong's Yeti Alt is a reference to Eddie the Mean Old Yeti. Sakurai saw it and so thought it was the best cartoon ever. I want to believe picture of Buster Kong looking at the sky. I was gonna talk about the Steven Universe and I got distracted. I don't know. I don't want to go on too long because I, I put thoughts somewhere else, but I was I like the finale a lot. And it's probably the third time Steven Universe has made me cry. And I'm not ashamed to admit that. I was gonna get into- oh no, oh god. I was gonna get into a topic, um... Specifically about the animation of that show a bit, and how I think a lot of stuff about it is grossly exaggerated. But, I don't know how interested people will be about that. I'll just say, um, re the size thing in Steam Universe at least, um, but... Good job. Um, there was a common complaint with the show about changing sizes a lot. Which, I mean, is, is fair if it bothers you that much, but I'm gonna make the stance that, um, if you watch nearly any other cartoon, that's really not a rare thing. <laughs> I watched an episode of Regular Show, like, a while back, and Skips and Mordecai's heights to each other, like, in comparison, changes a lot. Like, there's be some scenes where, like, Skips is top scholar is black, taller than Mordecai, and scenes where Mordecai is taller than Skips. It's it's just a thing that happens in animation. <laughs> like, especially televised. And a lot of times, size stuff tends to be, like, to make shots look a little nicer. So, like, if a character's too tall, you, like, shorten them a bit to make, like, a shot look nicer. 
It's it's very common. People just kind of. I think the general like discourse around Steve. It's happened with Over the Guard Wall too. Like, and I watched it. I watched it a bit recently, and Warden Greg's like heights in comparison to each other would change sometimes. It's a, a common thing for animation. It just kind of. I think people went crazy about it because Steve Universe is a popular sort of discourse. I mean, if it bothers you, I... If the art style shift bothers you a little later on, I can't, like, blame you, but, like, I do think people talk about it as, like, like... <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I do think people talk about it as if, like, it's the only, the like, cartoon ever to have that problem. And it's not. <laughs> this happens in a lot of animes, too. Like, characters will change heights a bit. For, like, the sake of a shot to look a bit nicer. <laughs> It's really not, like, a rare thing. It's just very noticeable, because Steven Universe has lots of blogs of people dedicated to pointing out every error in the show, so... I could talk about some more things, but I... There was a weird time where I think people were talking about the show like it was one of the worst animated-looking things on TV. I thought that was very weird. Just say that. If, if Steven Universe is one of, like, the worst anime-looking shows you've ever seen, you haven't watched a lot of cartoons, I guess. I can get it. Watch. Check this out. I can get it. Wait. I get it. Shut up. No Brento Floss. Brento Floss is in here. It's just Ryan from Twitter.com. I did cranky last time, um... Fix. No, yeah, I mean... I don't want to rag on it too long, but I... I <laughs> every time I see another, like... Hour-long Steven Universe random. I recommend it. Recommend it. Like, oh yeah, this is gonna add a lot to the conversation. I don't want to be like people who talk about animation on Twitter. Don't know what they're talking about most of the time. But I died. <laughs> but um, a lot of animation t like takes I see on Twitter a lot. Feel really like uninformed of like how the industry works. I don't want to get like all high and mighty on that though. But anyway, um, positively, I thought the final four episodes were very good. If I had one, like, this isn't really a complaint, but more like an odd thing. I'm surprised there wasn't more songs. There's only like two songs in the future, I think. There's Lapis's song, and then Blue Diamond has a song. That's the only, like, character so There's, like, a song that plays in the Bismuth Pearl episode. That's, like, an actual song they put in the show, not, like, a unique song. There's also a distinction made between size changes and consistency in that, yeah. I was, I, was, I was surprised when I got to, like, the final episode of the show and, like, there wasn't, like, a final song, because I thought there was gonna be, like, at least one. But I also think, from like a storytelling perspective, I don't think there was room for a song, probably. There's a little song that plays as Steven Leaves, but that's like not a character song, it's like just a song. I'm surprised they didn't get Spinel to sing one more song at least, because they had, they had the voice actor for her come back for like the last few episodes. She's like a, she's like a Broadway singer. I'm surprised they didn't take advantage of that a bit more. The movie was kind of a goodbye to like the song stuff in Steven Universe, I guess you could say. They kind of got a lot of songs out, which I think is fair. <laughs> You're right, spin out that sing change. <laughs> She's funny. Spinel's funny. It's not like a fucking grandma. She's funny. I like her. I didn't really talk about this level that much. 
I was talking about fucking Steven Universe. I guess this is one of the more unnotable levels, though. Not that it's bad, but like, comparison to some other ones. They did a great job. <laughs> Smell's a funnier character than we've had before. Anyway, I'm probably for Steven Universe. I thought the final four episodes are good. I kind of wish there was a. F I kind of wish there was a. F I mean, one more song, but I get why there wasn't. But um, on the whole, despite everything, I would still say Steven's show was one of the most important like pieces of like animation to me for a while. Always like forming me. Despite everything, it's still Steven. I see. I guess one more thing. I've seen a few people say like they didn't wrap up everything. Like there's like um, the chests in like Lion's Mane or whatever. They didn't really wrap up or something or like there's like the other Lapis character. But I have I have a bit of maybe a bit of a hot take. I don't think it's bad storytelling to not reveal every little thing. I think it's okay to to leave a few things to the imagination. That, I don't think revealing reveal what happens like in the chest or like what happens to the other lapis really, really matters in the grid. You, that's up for you. I think it's okay to have a few. I do, I do agree on Bluebird though. I'm surprised she didn't even come back once. <laughs> but I, I do think, I think, I think it is good to like leave a few things unresolved. I don't think every single thing needs to be answered. But anyway, that's about it for Steven. I'll miss. I guess like. Contentially. Oh, here we go. This is the Rock Bear level. I like the song of this level. <laughs> I actually like these levels. I tend to not like gimmicky levels like this. Like, yo, here's the level where you're in the Rocket Barrel. I think these are fun. There's lots of fun little animations. Like, look, look there's like you're in a cheese cave, and all the all the all the rats are like in a cheat, like doing like a cheese production thing. And I think that's fun. Look at that one's sleeping. That one's sniffing. This one's swimming. Look, it's so much fun. Wallace's favorite level. There's so many, like, unique little animations in this level, too. It's so cute. I think it's great that, like, the enemies in this game feel like characters within the world for the most part. Like, they're not just, like, a Goomba or, like, like a bad Nick or whatever. Like, these are, like, characters who live within the world they're in. Like, they're doing stuff. Look at They're making disasters with Jeez! I don't think any other like platformer I've played has killed me. <laughs> Ratatouille ass cave. <laughs> I don't think any other platformer I've played has like felt like more than a, like as like a world than like this. One. I feel like it's very common in platformers to, like levels to feel very condensed. Like Mega Man's a good example. Like all levels in that game feel like very within the level itself and, like, not within the greater world, which isn't a bad thing. I think that can lead to, like, good levels and, like, theming and stuff. But I'm a very big fan of, like, creating worlds within, like, a level and, like, telling a little story. I have to be careful with Mega Man because I don't like it very much, to be honest, and I, but I think that's not fair to, like, like, I don't like it so it's bad. I never like it to be like that. I never like being like, this thing isn't for me, so it's bad. I need to create the coin. Wait. I didn't get the coin. The big ass baby. Well, I was sort of talking about earlier. Um, very weird to me to think now that kind of era of like animation which kind of got me into animation is kind of officially dead not dead but over i guess is the better word because um this kind of started with with uh, adventure time and adventure time regular show clarence gumball steam universe all those are like over now it's very weird to think about that entire kind of era is done i don't really know what the kind of the uh, big show of this specific era is, though, right now. I don't know what's <laughs> gonna be the next show to define the next generation. 
like Adventure Time did. I remember this level because, um, Bakugan Battle Planet. Um, I remember this level because when they first revealed Dixie Kong for this game, it was- it, they showed her in this level, I believe. That's why I remember it, from the E3 reveal of it. I remember being very excited because she wasn't- she wasn't in Returns. I think it had been a while since we last seen Dixie. I think her last appearance before this was like the Sluggers of all things. And later, we found out Funky. I guess Teen Times Go is technically part of that era and still going, but this isn't like a knock at the show, but I feel weird kind of considering with that group because it's like an already established property show. I guess is what it is. Whereas most cartoons I kind of associate with this era, like very unique creator different shows for the most part, whereas Teen Time Go is like a property show, I, I guess. Like, when I think of Gravity Falls, like, that's Alex Hirsch's show, and I think of, like, uh, Steven Universe, like, that's Rebecca Sugar's show, but, like, when I think of Teen Titans Go, that's just, like, DC's show, I guess. That's why I don't really think about it. It is also very much a lot more aimed toward, like, even Gumball, in its, like, better days, tended to have a lot of, like, animation stuff for, like, <laughs> older kids. But not older kids, like, older people like me, like, what I liked, when Gumball was good, what I liked about it was, um, the animation stuff most of the time. I think the show used to be very, very creative with visual stuff. The later stuff was mostly focused on vague hand wave. And here's some more, like, platform contextualizing. Look at that. Look, these are, like, full-on contraptions. Isn't that neat? These aren't just like floating things, they got like little contraptions to show they exist. I, I love that. Even this, look, it's got balloons carrying it. So much. Isn't Yo Dab. It's called it Yo Gabba Gabba. Isn't Dabba Dabba. Yabba Dabba. Yabba Dabba Dinosaurs like finally airing or something soon? Did they announce it was actually coming? I have no idea. You're the ex don't you own the rights to that show or something? Don't you own the rights to Yabba Dabba Dinosaur? Oh, I like this part. I think it's fun. I think I've said it like every single level I've played in this game is I like this part. I think it's fun. Someday I'll go through an entire world in this game without saying that- level in this game without saying that. I think something cool in this game is, like, I can, like, remember, like, every level in the game based on, like, a fun part, I guess is a good way to put it. You know, in other platformers, you know, stuff kind of can melt together in your brain a bit. But in this game, I remember, like, every- I think about every level, pretty much. You own Thundercat's Roar? Good for you. I don't like this one. I'm not very good at it. I just keep pressing A. <laughs> I have lots of time left to get like these last few minutes. I'm, I'll be fine. I should probably just wait for it to come to me. That didn't work. <laughs> do, the, do the background level. Somebody modeled all of that. Isn't that fucked up? Or to, like, design that. Oh, they look like owls! I just realized that. The little mountains in the background, like, look like owls. Like, you can see, like, the two eyes, the top of the head, and, like, the beak area right there. So cool. Can you imagine this game was, like, 3D Land and World, where you had to get the Donkey Kong symbol at the end of every level to, like, unlock something? Like, how you had to touch the top of the flagpole in every level in 3D Land and World?
100% in 3D world is a little excessive, but I guess all you get is stamp. It's like a stamp for like beating every level with a certain character. Didn't 3D Land make you beat every level with Mario and Luigi to like the last true level? I can't remember. I feel like artificially extending a, a plug, uh, like a handheld game's land is a little weird. But who am I to say? This music is jam time. I feel like talking about the music in this game, I forget to sometimes. Just because like, oh yeah, every song in this game is good. The full track of the song is like 10 minutes long. I believe it is. So, um, I was playing the OST for this game when I was doing the Smash tier list video stream, which on three hours, and I remember this song went on for a while, but I didn't think about it too hard, because I like this song. Oh, here's a fun one. This level combines the vine gimmick, like this ringy bell gimmick. You do it for the vine. That was a good one. I like this level a lot. There's very good, like, flow and pace to it. I like when you get to go fast. Got these kind of breaking platforms, which kind of theme throughout the world a little bit. These owl guys are very funny. I'm glad. What is Vine? I only know TikTok. So, I hate to sound old. <laughs> what if, what's the difference between TikTok and Vine? They seem like the same thing, pretty much. Except TikTok is like, upwards phone. Like, the screen length, and like, Vine was like, like... Square. Longer videos. Okay. It's not something. I love those little owl houses. I'm dead. I talked about last time how this game hands out life you know, I'm like, I'm already, I'm with like at world 2 and I'm already at max lives. Game realistically probably didn't need lives. <laughs> We could just get Funky the Bananas. I've noticed every time I've died in this game, it's when I'm talking about a background set piece that I'm looking at. There we go. Went through all 99 of my lives for the fifth boss. That be... Because I can kind of understand. That one's a little tricky. I've got most of the bosses in this game kind of down. Because I've played it so much. But I can also understand. Kind of like, um... Very interesting watch. You will play, like, Luigi's Mansion for the first time. And doing like some of the bosses, cause like a lot of the bosses in that game like just like nothing to me anymore because I've played it so many times. And, like watching someone like face like who lost this or like one of like the more cryptic ghosts for the first time is very funny. You know, like obviously I know what to do, but like other people don't. I will say the who lost this is still hard to be. I think, think who lost is harder than the final boss to be frank. Cranky, cranky in the jungle. The thing more exploding. Gotta come quick. I have so many specific like in jokes about the Donkey Kong Country cartoon, like. Not of like the island. The Donkey Kong Country cartoon is a very easy target for YouTubers who want views. 
Like, none of my jokes are about that. It's like specific lines from the show me and my friends think are funny. And the joke's on them, because I wrote the book. <laughs> I've said this before. The Donkey Kong cartoon is seriously not that bad. It's just incredibly easy bait for, like, YouTube reviewers who want, like, easy clicks. Um, a certain internet reviewer, whose name I will not name, to avoid petty drama shit, um, put it on, like, one of his worst cartoons, or, like, an era thing. Or, like, just in general, I can't remember which it was. I remember being very confused by that, like, Donkey Kong is one of the worst cartoons you've ever seen. We're very lucky. Also, hi, Rosa! Welcome to Donkey Kong. Maniac monkeys on the moon! So it's about these two monkeys? I remember the whole full line. The moment from that show that always makes me laugh is, like, a Funky Kong's fucking, like, alien song. With like, I don't remember, there's like, the, the animation on it is very funny, like a bunch of like, alien little fucks are behind Funky. Interplanetary visitor dudes. Donkey Kong Country cartoon will have to stay where we all realize it was okay. I'll be the one to make it happen. Look at all the set pieces in the back. Oh, wait, this one's funny. They are so fucking... I love the notion of this fucking owl just crushing this banana just to spite these two monkeys. The big thing he does to scare Donkey and Cranky is to fucking just, um, crush a banana with a giant hammer. I think the funky version of, like, this cut seems, like, funny, but I think Funky has, like, a funny little animation where he just kind of, like, shrugs and looks annoyed. I can't remember. I remember one of the funky boss animations are really funny. I usually get through this first phase a bit faster, but I messed up. I usually get two hits off immediately. Shout out to like every like 10 year old who bought this game thinking it was gonna be a fun, nice Donkey Kong game. It came forth with a game that's like pretty hard by modern Nintendo standards. I think about that sometimes because like I have to wonder like how many like kids bought Donkey Kong because they know him from Mario and thought it was gonna be like a fun, easy like platform romp. Kind of like how Kirby and Mario are, and then got the game, and like life was destroyed by like how like genuinely difficult this is for like a Nintendo platformer. This boss, um, I remember when I played this when I was younger, I, I did struggle a lot with this boss particularly, but I was expecting that because I, I know Do I knew Donkey Kong was hard. I was used to Donkey Kong being hard. It is probably a good thing they added. It's jokes about like new funky mode. Is oh, hold on, I hit the boss. I forgot you could do that. Jokes about funky mode aside, it's probably good they added it. I imagine, I have to imagine, a lot of kids bought this game because it has Donkey Kong on the cover and were shocked to find how hard it was. But I think having an easy mode was, pro was probably a good choice. I think it works to make Funky Kong the incredibly powerful character. I think that's an oh shit. The hubris. 
I think totally just playing into what Funky Kong is, like, fucking gnarly dude, man, and making him incredibly powerful. Basically, Funky Kong is invincible in this game, pretty much. Oh, fuck. It's my fault. Funky Kong. They're, they totally play into the fact that Funky Kong's, like, how, like, who he is, like, incredibly, like, gnarly dude. I think that's really funny. You could just duck that? Yeah. Funky Kong can duck. Duck goose. Duck, Funky Kong could be, like, Funky, I think World of Light is in canon, because Funky Kong got blasted by the light, and he would have survived. The light would have tried to blast Funky Kong, and he just would have go, not cool, dude. And then they were like, oh, sorry, Funky, and they'd go away. I was too excited. Rolling. No, I lost, ah, oh, damn it. I like having Cranky at the end of the boss. Oh, well. Actually, they're fucking- they aren't pixels! Silly, Amanda, they're polygons! Like- like Twitter- like- like the one from YouTube. Okay. Alright, alright. I always thought it was weird Donkey Kong's anime, uh, Final Smash <laughs> was like a flurry of punches. But they didn't go with like the full visual reference, like having like. I always thought what ha should happen is Donkey Kong punches the opponent, and they get kind of taken to like a blank, like a black screen, like this was. And then Donkey Kong, like that's when he starts like doing the flurry of punches and has like all the poses and like, all you know, like the flashing light, like the flashing like red and yellow lights and stuff. I always thought it was lame, it was just a flurry of punches. It is based on Jungle Beat, but. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like some of the some of the final smashes in Smash Ultimate are like incredibly creative referential stuff. I think Donkey Kong they kinda skipped out a bit on. They could have done a lot more with old funk with old donkeys. Considering K Rule's final smash is fucking just Donkey Kong 64 mega reference. They probably could have done something a bit cooler for Donkey Kong. And then you got the Ginjonator. <laughs> Mass I consider Mass DDD part of kind of like modern Kirby, so I'm fine with that. That's Superstar Ultra, that's post soccer, right? That's something at least. I do all the secret levels after the boss, yeah. I I did th the last time last stream, I got I got it on my second try. The first one, my second try, so we'll see. I've done I've done these levels so much, they aren't too bad. But I'm gonna say that and screw up now. Sorry if I don't talk too much. These are like concentration levels. <laughs> I get out of bother. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. These are much harder when you're going with the puzzle pieces too. I'm not really bothering with them. Ah, fuck. My last play, my last 100% playthrough for this, I got all the puzzle pieces, you know, on all of these levels, and that that's that makes it a lot harder. So they often like, they often have you like go out of your way to do harder platforming, already hard platforming. <laughs> Oh fuck. Oh no. Oh. Barely. <laughs> I like how I survived that and missed the basic jump. Uh, a lot of the um hard levels like these look very cool when you do like in one like perfect go. So the very good there's a very good flow to these levels. Oh, 
levels all flow together very nicely because they're all about like keeping moving pretty much. So like all, pretty much every platform in these levels like fall or something immediately, so you have to like keep moving. It was a very good like flow, so it's very satisfying to like do it. Even like that one, like the second I land, it's already fallen. The music adds a lot to like fucking music. I always like in the context of these levels, like pretty much all these level enemies in these levels exist just to be jumped on. These dudes are just standing here so Donkey Kong can jump on them to progress. Imagine, like, that being your life. Oh boy. Here comes the penguins of Madagascar. Skipper, Private, Kowalski, Rico, the unlockable fifth one, Grandma. Damn it! <laughs> I'm always, one of the dumbest jokes I always laugh about is like there being a group of characters and like there being like a unlockable one, like an unlockable member of like the Scooby Doo gang or something. I always think jokes like that are funny. Like the secret fifth member of the Penguins of Madagascar that you will have to unlock. The forbidden third Mario brother you have to unlock. I think those jokes are funny because I'm like five. I, I was actually thinking about this, I meant to say this, I watched, uh, I was watching, um, Kung Fu Panda last night while I was, um, working on something. I think I was watching while I was playing Animal Crossing, not working on something. Uh, that, was, that made me realize what these, uh, games kind of art style reminds me of. It's very reminiscent of Kung <laughs> Um, it's very reminiscent of, uh, the kind of designs in Kung Fu Panda, which is a good thing, because I think those movies are very nice. I think, um... Those movies tend to get undervalued a bit in terms of the world of, like, good DreamWorks movies. People tend to agree they're good, but I don't see them discussed as much as, like, Shrek or How to Train Your Drag or, like, the 2D stuff DreamWorks has done. I like them. They're my favorite of, like, the good DreamWorks stuff, I think. The second one's my favorite. I'm a bitch for, like, almost everything in the second one. <laughs> But the third one um, is my favorite animation-wise, because the colors in Kung Fu Panda 3 go fucking off. Uh, so, about that, um, I think the first and third one are on Netflix, but not the second one. I think Madagascar is the opposite, where the first and third aren't, but the second one is. Netflix is kind of weird with that. Like, I think they had, like, one of the Disney sequels at one point, not, like, the first one, and it's weird. I think it's very weird. This is my hot take when people talk about like the 2D era of Ant DreamWorks like being underappreciated. Like, no, literally everyone who's into animation talks about Road to El Dorado. It's not like a forbidden underground film anymore. That's my, that's my DreamWorks hot take. Do you like how many lives I just got? This game, like, look, I'm still getting more. And there we go. Looks like a few tries. I'm very, very glad um, Kung Fu Panda <laughs> went out of its way to not make Poe and Tigress a thing. I think that would have felt very forced. <laughs> Poe is a gay man. Good for him, King. All right, next world. This is um, this is a uh, the fan favorite world. I would say. I don't know if it's my favorite. It's up there. But a lot of what people like about this game is in this world, for sure. We're gonna be able to see that soon. This is the world where, like, a lot of stuff comes together. Like, this, like the storytelling through levels stuff I was talking about earlier really comes to in this world, I think. Anyway, this level and song does, in fact, own.
Look at that. Look at look at that. Look at the trees dancing to the music. Look at that chicken. That might not be a chicken. That was a very really dumb fist. That was a chicken. David Wives was off his fucking shit when he made the music in this game. He did a- I talked about this last time, he did a live thing recently. It was very cool. Look at this. Look at that. More of that kind of like... Platforming, contextualizing stuff I love. Sunset in the back on this level is gorgeous. Great job on the graphics, um, Donkey Kong, who made who made this game. He did. Donkey Kong Lord Maya in 2020. Is this monkey from Streets? It is. I missed my chance. I might have missed my chance. Oh wait, hold on. Never mind. They need to bounce into the enemy for some reason. Look, I always I talk about this so much. I always like I always like when games like 2D games for like backgrounds like spark the imagination. Like what's out there? Uh, Kirby tends to do that a lot too. With like backgrounds have a lot of depth to them. I feel like I feel like there's more out there. For all my problems with Star Allies, which I think I have a lot of problems with, even though I like it. But yeah, I think it does very well. It's, that game has very nice backgrounds. They all are blurry, though. That's the problem, yeah. That was a very weird thing to do. This game lets you very much soak in the environment. Seen more of that kind of like build up thing I was talking. Like, see, like early in the level, we had these kind of platforms that move left to right. Now they're remixing a bit more challenges. Now you gotta avoid these things while they bounce left to right. That's called game design. I'm gonna pretend I know what I'm talking about. But speaking of, um, Nintendo Switch 2D platformers. I was thinking about Crafter World the other day, how incredibly alright as a game, but um, I think it's very weird the initial debut trailer for Crafter World really emphasized like the flipping of the- oh, this part's cool. Very cool. Really emphasized like the flipping um, screen mechanic, like it was gonna be a big, big thing. In the final game, it's more like a bonus thing, and like there's not like puzzles or something surrounded on about it. Yoshi's flipping island. Of course, of course. God, I imagine if that was the final name. But, um, it was very weird how, like, the initial trailer for that game really emphasized the screen flipping. And it's just kind of a bonus thing in the final, which makes me think... Because we saw that trailer, like, two-ish years before the game actually released, I think? It was a long time, which makes me think... Early in development, the game was supposed to, like, be about that, but they were struggling a bit. Most time, like, that seems like a very weird game to, like, have a huge, like, reveal to, like, release gap. So it does make you think there was a bit of trouble development-wise they struggled with. I think the game kind of... It's not as well defined as, um, Woolly World was. I kind of, I'm glad they made a new game, but there's times where, like, I kind of wish they just ported Craft World to Switch, admittedly. Not, like, Woolly World, I mean. That game's great, and I think more people should, I think people need to play it, because there's a very weird conception that every single Yoshi game released recently is, like, bad. I don't, I just don't think that's completely true, because, um, Woolly World's great, and has great music, too. Also, which is another false belief Yoshi games recently. Did, it did get a 3DS port, you're right. Oh no, Crafter World isn't bad. Like, let me, let me stress that. It's not bad, it's just, um... It's not the, I... I'm trying to think of the word to use. It's, 
I guess average sounds a bit too mean. I think there's way too much. There's a lot of effort from the get visuals for sure. Stuff like I could tell they cared when they were making it. Fuck! I was like, yeah, Chad fell down. <laughs> I think uh, extra epic yarn is one. There's a lot of very funny 3DS ports in the game, these systems later like years, like Luigi's Mansion, like, um, Epic Yarn, and Captain Toad, and stuff. I was, it's always, like, the 3DS's later years are pretty much imports, sequels, and, like, remakes and ports. <laughs> There's a lot of, like, weird ones, like, um, Luigi's Mansion on 3DS. Epic Yarn on 3 Like, who- Epic Yarn's so funny, because, like, nobody was probably asking- That was probably in demand, but it's like, hey, we can just do this. Like, just to- Ball- like, extend the life of the system a bit. The 3DS is, like, last year's seal very We need to extend the life of this, like, system as much as we can. And credit awards, too, so there's some cool stuff in there, like, um... I like, I am one of those weirdos who likes the Mario and Luigi remix. Ooh. Even if I do wish Luigi's Mansion was on Switch sometimes, the original, I think, I think the 3DS port just seems very charming and funny. I think the biggest tragedy of the 3DS's later years in terms of games was, um, I heard WarioWare Gold didn't do very good. And I think that's a shame. I think that game's very good. Anyway, here's where the story- here's where the storytelling comes in. So, um, with this first level, like a savanna level, like, like you know, we see the savanna for the first time. Then we go to the second one. What's, what's gonna happen here? Oh wait, no, it's a bit later, sorry. <laughs> no, that's the next one, sorry. I thought it started a bit earlier than it actually did. The storytelling comes in a bit. That level was mixed up. I thought this one was later for some reason. But anyway, uh, this is another fun one with like, introducing a gimmick and like, oh no. <laughs> I was about to say, um, well, I can't talk about this level. So I talked about this when I was talking about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. This game tends to have, ignoring the fact that I died, this game has to tend to have a lot of, like, safe, like, areas early on to, like, explore, like, what the gimmick's gonna be. Like, you get this flower right here to, like, kinda test the water, and if you fall, you gotta, like, have a safety net. So you can kinda see what the gimmick is. I think that's good. I actually wish I could have Cranky Kong. He's very good for this level, actually. And I mean, so, like, now you get the first kind of challenge with this flower. Like these bananas by tilting it back and forth, and they kind of got used to it from back there. Gonna get like a dangerous environment to test it in, but still mostly safe. You get a little reward for it. And kind of become closer, actually. Thank you. But I mean, about like this game having very smart level design in it most of the time. The flowers are sure to come back later. In new and exciting ways. I think I grabbed this guy too early. I can't really do what I need to do. And now, we're seeing them used in new ways, like as platforms. I need something to throw here. I don't have it. I, wait, hold on. My buddies. flowers will come back in BFB. Flower will return in BFB. Which stands for Big Friendly Bananas. 
No, I titled this last stream. Um, there's a very big problem. But one of this, I won't dock a point for it personally or anything. This game doesn't really have a problem where um, Dixie is by far the most useful of the partners for sure, and then Cranky has a lot of like uses. Like he can jump on spikes and is really good for getting speed. And then Dixie, uh, Diddy just kind of has nothing really for him compared to like Cranky or Diddy. All right, I mean Dixie. He, like, he can bounce off those with, like, Cranky. Cranky can also damage a lot of, like, enemies that are hard to damage, usually. D Diddy just kind of doesn't have much, is the problem. I don't really know what to do to fix that, is the thing. I think some sort of extra use would have been good. Maybe for, like, maybe if, like... His um, jetpack that floats down slowly lasted a bit longer, that'd be something. Second banana's all I am! Like, if the game gives me Diddy, I, like, and only Diddy, I wouldn't like be opposed to using him, but like, he's definitely outclassed. So, um, they, Dixie and Diddy both have the similar gimmick of giving you extra air time. But Dixie also goes up. Like, she gives you a bit of momentum going up. Why is Diddy only gives you, like, extra air time? There's very few occasions you really wouldn't want the extra ascension. Like, it's a platform. You're gonna want to... There's lots of ch t times you're gonna want to go, like, up. I guess it is very funny to think about, because I think we joked about this at the time when this game came out. Um, is, uh, Dix is, oh, there's something funny with this enemy. Here's a unique an- oh, fuck, sorry, Diddy, Dixie. Here's a unique animation for, like, knocking him off the cliff, I think. Oh, yeah, no, wait, hold on. Oh, fuck, sorry. <laughs> this thing I wanted to show off and I died. Uh, we joked about that at the time, about um, Diddy being very, like, kind of useless in this game, but then Smash 4, because they came out near each other being, like, the best character. Okay, yeah, here it is. You can trick him into falling off the cliff. See? See? He has a unique animation falling off. Did you see that? He, like, struggles and falls. I love- I didn't realize that's, like, my last playthrough you could do that. Oh, there's another thing. Um, if you go up to a plat- if you go up to the edge of a platform, Donkey has a unique animation. I feel like he kind of tilts down. I'm gonna fall off this cliff trying to show off this animation. That's not worth it. He, he does, he's like a falling down, like about to fall down animation. You see, here we are. Now we have another little challenge with these flowers. We've got with two, and it's a bit harder this time. He's got bubbles! Oh no! No! Oh well. I think it's just a puzzle piece you get from this, and I'll, I'll live. Crank. I think Cranky is- I haven't watched a ton of speedruns of this game, but I think Cranky is the speedrunning, like, favorite. You, you get a lot of momentum with him. I have- there's not a good lot- there's not a, a few good times to, like, show it off yet, but, like, you can't get a lot of speed with him. Stanky Kong. Here we are in the donkey and it's Kong. Great messages in chat tonight, everyone. Keep it up. I did a great job there. I'm just trying to fucking land right here to get this. Alright. What the balloon? I have 99 lives, but I want the balloon! the last Kong letter in this level giving me a bit of trouble. I might be thinking about puzzle piece, actually. Oh, no. It's just right there. And when Cranky Kong said get good on- Oh, no! <laughs> said get good on Twitter. <laughs> I do, and you'll said double rainbow. Laugh. Cranky in the jungle. This will be back pretty far. Although I guess I was also spent a lot of time right there. 
There, I mean. I like when Nintendo does character takeovers on Twitter. They should do it. Remember the Toad one? Remember, like, the very long, like, dot, 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 and then image of Toad? What was that even for? What were they promoting? <laughs> Whoa. Was it, they just let Toad take over? I feel like, was that for Star Rush, I think? That game had, like, play as Toads? They've done Cranky Kong, they've done Wario, they've done Toad. Remember the Wario one, because Wario goes like, you want Mario Sunshine content? Here you go! <laughs> I know- Star Rush was the Toad one. Somebody out there is like incredibly big into all the 3DS Mario parties and Godspeed. Somebody has to like love those- somebody out there has to love those games. Anyway, here's the environmental storytelling stuff happening now. So we so the first level, we saw the savanna. And now, and now you see Savannah Tornado. So like, well, the area we we're just exploring. Now kinda like in ruins a bit. Like the trees and like these brambles from the last level like are here again. Now this area is kinda being destroyed. This kinda comes to a part three at this level. Reminds me of like. Okay, so I'll, use, I'll use Diddy. Just, just to use him. The Tornado's in the soul reminds me of the one from Mario 3. Which always confused me when I first played it about like how you just get past it. Like the one tornado in that one level. Oh, this is a Rambi level. I thought this was a Rambi level for some reason. Mario Party the top 100 is the biggest. Mario Party the top 100 is so sad because that idea owns and they wasted it on like a late life 3DS game. So nobody really bought it, for one. So it was a late life 3DS game, the Switch was like huge. And then um they didn't they didn't make a board. <laughs> they didn't make any boards like for the mini games, so it's like just the mini games. And it's like Mario Party mini games are fun, but you kind of need to like the board to like contextualize you playing the mini games, like you have a good reason to want to win. It's just a weird game. I don't want I don't want to be one of those like every game that was on the 3DS should have came to Switch people in that era. But I think of any game from like that group I wanted on Switch, it was probably it's probably the top 100. Should make Mario Party insane trilogy. Here we go. Here's one of the gimmicks this level. Thunder. You see, you see in the package that thunder makes it the tomato. So that's gonna be important. So what happens next? Hey, look at this. Even like these platforms are getting carried up by the tornado. Isn't that fun? Oh, he'll be okay. Take from Barnyard. We'll be okay. Oh, this is great too. Um, the enemies from the level. Oh, yeah. Um, see these flaming guys. Pay attention to them specifically about them getting flung around because that's important. I think it's really funny that like the enemies are obstacles in this level, but like not <laughs> for like the usual reason an enemy would be an obstacle. They're just getting fucking tossed around. These, see, these flaming guys are kind of going all over the place. You know, that might be dangerous. Like, that might cause something to happen. I don't know what. What could it be? Something well, might happen. Yeah. I love the little penguin dudes, too. They did a very good job. I don't hate the enemies from, um, Returns. If I had Dixie, I could have survived that. I don't hate the enemies from Returns. Um, 
but the penguins in this game are definitely a lot- the, the ice mads are definitely a lot more, like, personality filled than, like, the tiki's of the previous one. They feel like a lot more, like, characters within the world, too, a bit, I guess I would say. Oh, good Rosa. She's playing Animal Crossing. For Nintendo. God. Yeah, I just missed a barrel to take me to an area, but it's fine. <laughs> Look, there's the enemy from the previous level. Did you see it? Remember the bull I knocked off the cliff? That was him. There he goes. I had to sacrifice Dixie and Rambi to get here. <laughs> Anyway, so I pointed out those fire guys, right, that were gonna flung around. I did not murder- Bottles did not murder his wife and kids. I have bad news. He did. Anyway, so I mentioned those enemies are getting flung around, right? Those fire enemies getting flung around everywhere by the tornado and causing destruction. You get the payoff for that in this level. So because of those guys getting flung around all over the place, and the tornado... Now the environment's been destroyed. Huh? Huh? Isn't that, isn't that cool? It's right there, so like, we know this is their fault. Isn't that fucking just the coolest shit? You've seen like, the effects of another level, like, pause in the next one. Again, it's like... I said this. I've said this so many times. This game is really, really good about like making the game feel like a world. Hey, Dixie, he died last time, so. The music in this little fucking kicks ass too. This is just a, this is just a good. This is a puzzle piece. There's some really like grand sound, like dramatic. A lot of the dramatic songs in this game are like incredibly intense, and you wouldn't expect that from Donkey Kong, but you, it is. I think that is spectacular. David Wise was out of his fucking mind on this one, it's like five times now, but it needs to be stated. It can't be said enough how out of his fucking mind he was. I love this, like, these platforms going down are going down because the trees can burn. Oh, so these enemies are kind of neat. Um, these are enemies from Returns, and they're only in this level. But now they're on fire. In the previous game, they were just statues, but in this game, they're on fire. I think that's cute. Like, bringing those enemies. Like, look at the bananas. They're, like, copying around like their, like, feet are hot. That's great. These guys, I think most people probably recognize these guys from Mario Kart, because they're in the Donkey Kong stage, and that's in both 7 and 8, which are, like, the two biggest Mario Karts. <laughs> There's, like, sales, I believe, so, like, oh, we've seen them before. We don't play Donkey Kong. I mentioned this before, but I was thinking about this recently, um... It's very weird to consider most Mario Kart stages aren't based off specific games. There's like only a few. There's the Donkey Kong stage, which is explicitly based off Returns. There's Luigi's Mansion in um, DS. And then there's the Delfino Plaza stage in Double Dash. But for the most part, most stages in Mario Kart, like courses in Mario Kart, are kind of just original concepts. And it's very funny to like think about because like. We'll talk about like racetracks in Mario Kart, like, oh, they should base one up based off this game. But they don't really do that a lot. They tend to like make original worlds for like Mario Kart, and I think that's interesting. Personally, Ice World technically is too, yeah, because it has um, her observatory and some stages in the background. Yeah, there's a few, like, yeah, the Desert and the Airship ones are two. 
there's definitely some, but like um, original definitely outweighs like stuff based off stuff explicitly. And I always find that interesting. I don't think people talk about that a lot. People always talk about like, hey, they should put the, a new Doc State like course in Mario Kart. They don't typically like could base stuff off stuff very specifically a lot of the time. Although I would like a new Doc course, that'd be cool. Um, here's a very funny example, though. One of the few examples is there's a stage called Diamond City, which is the city from WarioWare in, um, one of the arcade Mario Karts. But it gets a little weirder, because the stage is mostly themed to EGAD, I think I remember. I can be cranky. I'm gonna grab Dick's middle. It's fine. There's, like, practically no references to WarioWare. And it's mostly themed after EGAD. But it's called Diamond City. <laughs> and it's in Mario, one of the arcade ones. Very weird. Oh, hello. Oh, I'll, I'll grab a picture of it in a minute. Oh, great. I got a picture of it in a minute to show a few examples. I've always found it interesting, um, a lot of, um, Donkey Kong and Yoshi spin-off stuff tends to make it, like, Mario games. Like, um, you know, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong environments and stuff tend to make it, like, into Mario spin-off stuff to, like, represent Donkey Kong, Dixie and Diddy and stuff into appear in spin-offs. And then Poochie's in Mario Odyssey and then, like, Yoshi, like, environmental stuff tends to, like, appear when, like, Yoshi's involved. But um, when Wario appears in like Mario stuff, a lot of his extended cast and like themes tend to not be referenced. Like, no WarioWare or land characters ever appeared like in Kart or like tennis or anything. I don't know what it is about Wario specifically. If I had to guess thematically, like WarioWare's cast is like maybe a little more different than like DK and Yoshi is to like Wario. I think Captain Syrup would fit in mostly fine if I like a uh, Mario character was like to appear in a Mario thing. He's like basically like kind of like the same design as like Pauline or like Peach or whatever. They like pulled those Diamond City track from like Mario Kart. So fast, you can just enjoy. Um. Can't really find. It. There's not a lot of good images of it, but um, pull one up. One moment. I think it is interesting to show. I can't really find like the stuff that's easy. Yeah, here's a few images of it. One second. I have to go to Mario Wiki. <laughs> Alright, so you're about to see this, um, so the track is called Diamond City, which is this location of Wario, and I think it's in the Wario Cup, too. But, um, as you'll see in the image, it's themed to eat Gad. So you can see, like, the statue of him right there in the back. And it doesn't really look like how Diamond City looks in WarioWare, because uh, Diamond City is kind of just like a normal looking city for the most part. It's like a little more colorful. This is like a futuristic looking city, a little bit. But it's also weird, because I think this is the only appearance of EGAD in any Mario Kart material. So this stage is an enigma. It's named after a Wario thing, but it isn't that thing. And it's referenced to EGAD. This is his only appearance in any Mario Kart at all. Very weird. Anyway, let's play Donkey Kong some more. Uh, Doesn't that game also have Robot Mario? I believe so, yes. One of them does, at least. I was talking about this with some friends recently. Um, Egad, Toadsworth, and Kemic are characters I think if you were like an outsider to Mario, you wouldn't think were fan favorites, but all three of them kind of like are. 
Like, if you weren't a huge Mario fan, you'd just be like, wouldn't think that. But as someone who is a Mario fan, I know a lot of people, like, want those three characters and stuff more. I know, like, there was, like, a decent amount of excitement when Kemic was finally playable in Aces, for example. They're way more popular than you think they'd be. Egat's, like, one of the most requested characters from Mario Kart right now. I think if there's one character who hasn't been in Mario Kart at all yet, that I think is weird that hasn't, it's probably Egad. He, he was almost in DS, just in, if you didn't know. I think he got replaced with Rob. Which, I mean, worthy sacrifice, but... I need to close Mario Wiki. He was replaced with Dry Bones? Oh. Dry Bones is okay, too. I guess. <laughs> he died! That's what happened! <laughs> I think I've talked about this before. Um, there was kind of an era where, like, e get where, like, Dry Bones for, like, a very, like, right. <laughs> you're gonna puzzle piece to get all these banana punches. Uh, e Dry Bones for, like, a very, like, prevalent character of the Mario universe. They played, like, in everything for a bit. He's, like, always the default, like, kind of, one well, of the enemies they defaulted to for a bit. It was kind of like Petey Piranha in that way. I missed that. Good job. Me and Petey Piranha were kind of like enemies they would default into a lot. They've toned that down for the most part. He's still in a lot of things, but he isn't like as major as he is. I say now like Boo, Koopa, and Shy Guy are like the main Mario enemies in spinoffs that tend to be playable. Boo, uh, Koopa, and Shy Guy are kind of like, I guess, the fan favorite enemies a bit. Koopa's definitely the most iconic, and then Boo and Shaggy are more like the fan favorite enemies. I think Kart's the only thing Boo isn't consistently playable in, but they tend to have King Boo instead for like Kart. So that's still a form of Boo. Boo's in tennis, Boo's in golf, Boo's in baseball, Boo's in party. He's the first enemy playable in party. And then Super Mario Party was finally woken up to add Kumba. <laughs> yeah, you need Dixie to get this secret. I, believe, are, I think Cranky can get up here too, maybe? DK. Okay. <laughs> Emma Bro is all. I guess it is weird Hammer Bro isn't playable more, because he feels more popular than he, he, like, is in terms of, like, playable appearances. I mean, if it makes you feel any better, his playable debut was Mario Kart Tour for, like, kart games. He's in no other Mario Kart besides Tour right now. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I don't want to think about all the characters who aren't in 8 but are in tour. Don't make me think about that. It will hurt. You're right, they did add four hammer bros. I remember this because Nash called them the Beatles. Fuck. Made the K. Um, type of Mario characters in Mario Kart is very highly requested within the Mario fanbase. Um, if I'm being honest, I support people who want them, because, like, kart games tend to be, like, a good place to put, like, spin-off characters, but I also can't act like I'm dying for, like, any of the paper characters to appear in kart, admittedly. Fuck, I missed it again. I don't... I don't feel a huge connection to, like, a lot of the paper characters. I- Vivian would probably be the one- if I had to pick one, I'd probably want Vivian and Cart the most, because I would, she's my favorite, I guess. Vivian or Goombella, maybe. But I don't really feel strong about, like, I don't know, Co Cooper. <laughs> what I feel much more strongly about is they put a Mario and Luigi character in there. That's what- that's where I go. That's- that's where I am. I think Starlo should be playing for Mario Kart, that's my hot take. Starlo has been in nearly every Mario & Luigi game. She's earned her right. 
let her, let her drive. I think Cackloader would be cool too. I like Cackloader's design a lot. Although I assume the fan favorite to get in is Fawful. I'm, I'm more of a Cackloader than Starlow person myself though. I have always, this is my weird Mario Kart pick. I want King Bomb to be playable in Mario Kart. There's, I think I've talked about this before. If the Mario Kart roster was decided with the same people who did the Crash Team Racing roster, King Bomb would absolutely be playable. That's my hot take. Of course, I also, you know, I want the usual thing people want. I want Pauline. I want Egad. Egad's probably my other big one. Egad and King Bomb are like the two weird ones I want. These guys, it's a whole little scene right there. Fun. Did you all hear about that? Um, Crash Team. So, like, you know, Crash, how you like break item boxes, like collect stuff. They added the crate you break in Crash as a playable character in Team Racing. Like, just, just the box. It can race. Like, imagine if the question mark block. Oh fuck. Imagine if the question mark box from Mario like was playable. I'll, I'll put a picture of it on the screen when I'm done this level, but it's, it's very, it's, it's kind of the best. I, I believe it was kind of an in-joke within, like, the Crash Team Racing community, like, jokingly asking to add, like, the check mark box as a playable character, so they just kind of did. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a popular joke in, like, the Crash community, like, make it playable, and they did. And then of course there's um there's fixed Rilla Roo. So there was a there was a character who like model didn't look that good. His name is Rilla Roo. He was added like one of the post launch characters, and, like his design was kinda like Holy shit, that guy's fucking dead. Um he was kinda like his design was a bit contested with like fans. So they added a separate character <laughs> named Fixed Rilla Roo, who was the same character with a different design. I'll show that too, hold on. Let me let me get the let me get these. These are these are fucking hysterical to me. Hold on. All right, hold on. I need to get a picture of the checkpoint box in the cart to like let you know how it is. All right, hold on. <laughs> so. Here is checkpoint crate. Just so there's no confusion, this is a playable character. You, you play as this thing. This isn't like a mod or like just like a cart in a crate in a cart. This is a playable character. You can race as this thing. I fucking love like this type of shit so much. Like this dumb kind of stuff. Let me get, um, fixed Rillaroo. That's the other funny thing. This, this is fucking hysterical to me. I need to get a picture. I don't think there's any picture of them together. Let me just, uh, get a picture of Rillaroo. One second. Okay, so one second. Okay, so this is Rillaroo. This is how he appeared when he initially. He's a character from Crash Bash, if, like, which is the Crash Party game. He, he debuted in that. He was one of the post launch characters. Yeah, that's Rillaroo. And uh, there was a bit of contention with his design. Because so, he didn't like look that great compared to like the original, so I need to, I, you need to understand. This is a separate character. They have. this is not they don't share a slot. This is an entirely separate character, and his name is Fixed Rillaroo. These are two separate characters <laughs> on the roster. 
This is Rillaru, and this is fixed Rillaru. They take up two different slots, and they have different skins. It's fucking hysterical to me. This character's legal name is Fixed Rillaru. It's fucking incredible. I'm gonna be honest, uh, Mario Kart, the next one's, like, roster has a lot to live up to with Crash. I actually have to play this level one more time, there's one more exit. <laughs> so I'm just around my play it three times. Um, some of the characters in, like, Crash Team Racer are absolute fucking, like, deep cuts. Like, there's a character who is a boss in, like, a Game Boy Advance game who is, like, on screen for, like, 30 seconds, and he gets to be a full character in Crash Team Racing. There's a character who was only, like, in a flip phone game who they added to the roster. There's a character who's based off, like, a rumored character who didn't actually exist they added to the roster. That game's, like, roster is crazy. They got Nina Cortex, who is the living embodiment of swear words. That's most what's surviving. I'm like, the next Mario Kart comes out. But I don't- I don't hate 8's roster. A lot of people, like, despise the roster to 8. I think it's fine. But Crash definitely set some big, big expectations for, like, Mario. Crash also- yeah, you're also right. Crash doesn't have as many characters as Mario. At the, at the very least, the next Mario Kart, like, has to have, like, Diddy and Pauline the, and Birdo. Like, if the next Mario Kart comes out, and it doesn't have those three characters, like, it's, it's gonna be a little embarrassing. <laughs> I, 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 me and my, we, a lot of us have joked about, like, Nina Cortex looks like the living embodiment of a swear word. I guess in terms of, like, Erdo, um, Didi, and Holly are the three big ones I think have to be in the next Mario Kart, because I think they got really shafted in 8. But in terms of, like, deep cuts I want, I guess Egad and Kemic and King Bomba are, like, the three I want. And Poochie! I want Poochie. Look. Look. Crash made, like, it's, like, four-legged characters work in a racing game. They can make Poochie work. Sakurai was too cowardly to put Poochie in Smash despite all my letters. It's not too late to put him in... It's not too late to put him in Mario Kart. I'm still saying, um... I'm not giving up the Poochie dream yet. Um, the spirit for Poochie in Smash is Yarn Poochie, not regular Poochie. Regular Poochie does not have a spirit, it's only Yarn Poochie, so I'm just saying, he's- he's- Poochie has to be on the mind of the team. There we go. Is it weird to say, um, an ARMS character is getting more excited about the Smash DLC than, like, Joker did? <laughs> I'm kind of more excited than I was when Joker, like, was announced the first character. But I guess I also like Arm for the, like, Persona, so I, I guess that's bad to have. But, like, if Banjo was the first character revealed in, like, the last pass, I probably would have been, like, excited, too. I posted who I wanted the other day. I can put that on screen right now, who I want. I drew, I drew a little picture. I don't expect, like... Pretty much any of these characters to get in, but you know it's it's fun to it was fun to think about. Hold on, I drew, I drew a fun little picture. These are who I want. <laughs> Crash is probably pretty likely. Like if, if anyone here is gonna get in, I, I think Crash is probably the most likely. I don't. I, there's like zero percent chance for Heavy. He's not getting in. Uh, Crash is probably like absolutely the most likely. I'm not. I'm not giving up on Banana Wild D yet. I lo I, it's funny, so uh, Eggman was my favorite from like that list too, like in terms of like art. I want to not give up on Reimu, because I, I think it's more possible than think people think. But I, I don't, I'm not going to get my hopes too up. Uh, but here's why I'm kind of back on the Bandana Waddle D train. 
The arms character in Smash was specifically a request from the arms team. Like, apparently the arms team requested Sakurai to put an arms character in Smash. And there's some dialogue in Star Allies is like, is it very much is referencing Bandana Waldeen Smash. So I'm not giving up the dream of like, maybe, maybe the Kirby team went up to Sakurai and, you know, you know, ask them, maybe, maybe ask them a question. You know? You know? I think Raymo is the most likely indie character to get the full slot though. People tend to say Shantae, but uh, Raymo kind of outdates Shantae a bit, uh, by a bit. And uh, if you're, if you knew, if, it's hard to like explain with like, cause Poe's not like super huge in America, but like it's, it's very big in Japan. It's kind of like how like, we, I think most American Smash fans were confused about Terry. It'd probably be a similar situation with Raymo. She's a lot bigger in Japan than she is here. I, I, it's funny because uh, Rose is talking about like the heavy trailer being like um, all the classes fighting over the invitation. I've had that exact idea of like the trailer being like all the classes fight over the invitation. Heavy gets it. My other idea was like you know how like whenever they do Team Fortress Two shorts, it's always in Sword Still Maker. I think doing a Sword Still Maker Smash reveal would be fucking hysterical. Like have Mario in the TF2 art style. <laughs> anyway, uh, this level. This level is, uh, is the E3 demo level, and if I had to guess why, it's probably because it was the best level to show off the dynamic camera angles in this game, because there's a lot of, like, dynamic shots like this throughout the level. This level probably has, like, the most, like, these kind of sections where, like, the camera, like, angles itself, like, have, like, a 3D appearance. But, you know, it's not very surprising, actually, they picked this for, like, the E3 demo. It shows off the game very, very well, it's a very solid level. No, it's funny you, uh, you say that, uh, Autumn, because I think with that a lot, like, I think a lot of ways we worth Smash characters is based on our history with them. Because, um, obviously, like, I don't, I don't think much of Isaac Golden Sun at all. But also, that's not fair, because I haven't, I haven't played Golden Sun. So to some people, Isaac's, like, the biggest assist trophy you could add, but to me, he's, like, just a character from the Game Boy Advance I don't really care about. Uh, same with, like, um... So there was another character I was thinking about the other day. But, um, it's very weird. Like, I think your perspective, like, how much you know about a character, like, seen from them, can kind of, like, warp with how you think. I think this is my take. I think people tend to take... I love talking about Smash, but I think people take, like, roster warp way too seriously. They should absolutely... <laughs> Boy, but nap, you got a point. Oh, fuck! Again, I am the person who likes Piranha Plant Smash. I am the worst person to talk about. <laughs> oh no! Fuck, I think you get auto checkpoint after this. Fuck. I have to die here. I have to kill Donkey Kong. <laughs> I have to go get the letter. I have to kill Donkey Kong. <laughs> Fuck. Wait. Can I die? Okay, good. No, yeah, uh, back on topic. It is interesting knowing, remember, this was the E3 level, because, like, looking at it, you can kind of totally see why. It's kind of, like, the basalt of shot, like I was saying, like, the dynamic camera angles and stuff, and, like, got some barrel shooting, which is very Donkey Kong. You got some basic plot. It's a very, like, solid little level, isn't it? Like this is like an E3 level, I guess. There we go. I always think about like how they pick level like levels for like E3 events and stuff. Like obviously here, like this is a very good E3 level, but like most time they tend to do, like a level for, like the first world. Smash Ultimate has a fixed Donkey Kong. 
The sound that it makes with Donkey Kong Richard shades up wooden pits and soul sounds so plants vs. zombies. So that's. I like doing that in order. They should add the sunflower to smash. You got a point there. I think they should. Sunflower? I think I've mentioned this before. I love the idea of, like, a Freddy Fazbear me costume getting added to smash. And, like,. I like to do like a little trailer for like the me and DB costumes, like set the gameplay. I like the idea in my mind of like the Freddy Me costume trailer, like playing just ambient noise, like exciting fast plays gameplay goes by. Like, it's hard to like, it's, it's funnier like in like visual than like me explaining it. New remix included, just like the remix is ambient noises. <laughs> Oh yeah, this level. Um, this level is like... Oh look at this! I remember this. Um, you go up to the ledge and press down, Donkey Kong's hands like curved, like look like he's grappling onto the side of the edge. That's very interesting. Like, I feel like a lot of platformers tend to just like... They would just do this, except like Donkey Kong's model rotated. I think that is neat. I'm glad I went a whole, like, explaining a cute detail without dying, which I tend to do. Oh, I know what I can talk about. I finally watched the Duncanville Fridge episode. After joking about it, I didn't actually watch it when it came out. Because it came out near my birthday, I think, and I was doing something. But I finally watched it, and I can safely say, Duncanville is pretty okay. <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> In the realm of, like, adult cartoons, Duncan Bill's honestly pretty alright. <laughs> there's, there's some, it's not, like, amazing, but there's some, there's some cute jokes. There's some okay jokes. It leans a bit more to, like, Bob's Burgers than it does, like, Family Guy, I would say. It's a pretty easy watch. I think the most interesting thing about the show, though, is, like, it switches back and forth to, like, Family Guy-level animation, where it's, like, very, like, kind of, like, boring and a little generic. And then sometimes it just starts having, like, squash and stretch, like, smears and stuff all out of, of nowhere. And that's very interesting. I, Bob's Burgers kind of does that, too, though. Yeah, uh... I would say this a, a bit more than the forget. There's, there's some very cute, like, gimmicks and stuff, like, I think, like, I love, like, they do some fun stuff, like, the pressing buttons, like, maybe just make stuff go. But, in, like, in the realm of Donkey Kong Country Chop Freeze, which has some of the funnest levels of 2D history, so this is a bit, like, a bit more forgettable than most levels. The music, though, is still always good. It's still great. David Wise. Great stuff. Making, making the good music. But speaking of, like, composers, it's so funny to remember, like, Grant Kirkhope knew about Banjo before, like, anyone did, and he had to keep it a secret. <laughs> For, like, a long time. He, he, he played Coid so much. If you, like, look back at his tweets about Banjo and Smash, the dude played Koi so much, and it's so funny. He literally said, don't expect Banjo at E3. <laughs> It's so uh, he was having fun with it. And then he tweeted about him crying when they got revealed, and I'm like, oh no. Um I remember that he did a Grant Kirkhope did like a cover with like um I think his family jewels is his name. I was thinking about that because I watched it, and I'm like, he probably knew about Banjo when they were, like, re like doing that together. Like, so, I think it was a Banjo cover specifically, it's like, he knew when they were doing that. 
about Banjo. It's also interesting to consider, um, Mario and Rabbits pro plays a role in Banjo getting to Smash a little bit. It's, um... The one on the Mario, I think that, like, the director of Mario plus Rabbids said, Hey, Grant, Nintendo wants to see you about something. That's kind of how they got Grant to do it, I think. That's a little fun. Uh, speaking of Mario plus Rabbids, that's probably going to be, um, the next series I do on stream. That's something I wanted to play on. What the fuck? <laughs> that's something I wanted to play. For a long time, um, I'm probably gonna be doing Mario and Rabbids and Celeste and switching off on them. Those are the two ones I'm doing next. I'll do like Mario and Rabbids one night and then Celeste another night, probably. Like, we go back and forth and then some Toho and like GameCube between. The reason I thought this level, this enemy was only in one level, but I forgot he was in this one too. I thought he was only in like the previous one we saw him in. Some reason. Uh, I've talked about this plenty before. Mario and Rabbids. I, Mario Odyssey is probably the best Mario game on the Switch, but I think Mario and Rabbids is my personal favorite game. Mario game on the Switch. It's one of my favorite games of all. Th I did that wrong. So just use it later. Oh well. Mario and Rabbids is like in my top ten games, as silly as that sounds. I remember because I was a bit more excited about the Mario and Rabbids DLC at E3 that year than I was Smash, like just a bit. <laughs> When Grant Kirkhope got on the stage and, like, played the fucking Donkey Kong melody thing, I lost my fucking mind. That was the only thing I remember <laughs> from Ubisoft's E3 that year was the, uh, the melody Grant did. God, remember Ubisoft last year, though, at E3, where they literally just, sh they just showed, like, um... Fucking Tom Clancy for, like, an hour. <laughs> I streamed that live. It's not on my archive channel because it's like kind of before I was like archiving stuff. But I definitely watched it all. Anyway, uh, this is a Bramble level. The, the Brambles, this is kind of like a callback to Dungeon Country uh, 2. Is one half Bramble? I think it's just, I think 2 is kind of the Bramble game. Get it, my mind is slipping. But anyway, uh, a common complaint with this level is um, it doesn't use. So there is a remix of uh, Bramble Scramble um, in this game. Like it's, we've heard it already. It was before like the rocket level last time. But it doesn't get used here. I think credit where it's due. I agree that it's weird. But I think the way that song sounds doesn't exactly match with the visuals of this level. That's probably why they didn't use it. Because uh, the Bramble Scramble remix in this game is very soft sounding. This is a very bright and fun a a level. With lots of, like, plants popping up and stuff. That's, that's my guess as to why, like, they don't use the music here. But I can also understand, like, wanting it to play here. This is a good cranky level, also. A good level would be, like, the Crank Meister. I think uh, Nintendo's probably gonna still have their like conference around June. In fact, I, I am, I'm almost sure they are because the ARMS character is already announced to be released and shown in June. So I'm sure Nintendo's still gonna be doing um, their thing in June anyway. Honestly, I, t I think E3 like disappearing is gonna be like nothing to a lot of like companies. Like Nintendo's probably still just gonna do a conference around June anyway. And then when, like, everyone's gonna do, like, digital conferences here, plus E3 was wasting them a ton of money, and it's gonna die. That's my, that's my prediction for E3, like, going forward. Wait, this level's very fun. 
I kind of like how this level kind of grows as you go on. Like, the plants are, like, making the level rise up. Like, the level's, like, growing as you go on. <laughs> I mean, like, I do feel like my commentary in this game gets a little, like, repetitive. I'm mostly just praising the game, but to be fair, this is kind of my favorite game of all time. So, like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I almost exclusively have good things to say about this game. It's kind of my favorite ever, so... Expect a very similar situation when I eventually do, like, three. Luigi's Mansion 3. It's a game I recognize the flaws of, but I'm too enamored by it all <laughs> to, like, maybe focus on. I, I, I've heard of, like, people's complaints about 3, and I can clearly, like, see where people are coming from a bit, but I'm a, it's one of those weird cases where I'm kind of too enamored by everything good about it to, like, care as much as I maybe should. There was another game, like, I think I described Odyssey's like that. People, like, point out flaws in Odyssey, like, yeah, I agree. Those are problems, but like I'm a little too enamored by the game to notice them most of the time. I think that's actually like a strength you could say though. Like if a game has problems, then you don't think about it ever because like you're too like invested in the game to like notice the problems. I think that within itself could be like considered a strength. I mean, it is no masterpiece after all. Can't wait for Steven Universe's no masterpiece to finally release now that the show is over. I don't like doing, like, long games for the stream ever. Like, Mario and Rabbids is probably gonna end up being the longest stream I end up doing. But there's a part of me that I mean, like, I want to do Yokai Watch 3 someday, because that is one of my other favorite games of all time. I died. <laughs> but, um, I feel like that- I don't know how I would, like, structure that, though. I don't know how I would begin to structure a Yokai Watch 3 stream, if I ever had the ability to. I kind of go all over when I play that game. I spend like a bit like... That's like a long way, so I don't even have a 3DS capture card, so like that day is not like a long time from now. Unless they port 3 to Switch, which I doubt, because no one port did really badly. <laughs> How many subscribers will it take you to get the Y Academy game? Somebody if somebody donates money to me, I'll do it. I'm not buying that game willingly, but if someone donates money to me, I'll play the fucking Y Academy game. Noted? <laughs> oh no. I probably have to like get someone on to like translate for me. Hey, Curve, you want to play Y Academy with me? <laughs> there is a Y Academy game, yeah, they announced um, one and it looks incredibly budgeted, I, I'll just say that. I, I'll, it looks, I know it looks budgeted, because when it got first announced, everyone thought it was a mobile game. I'll say that, I'll, that's the best way to describe it. Anyway, um, here's a bit of a hot take, maybe, once we get to this level. I think this is the least memorable boss in the game to me. I always forget about this one. This cutscene's always good as usual, but I think this boss is like the least memorable to me. <laughs> Look at them, like, ooh, banana! <laughs> oh, it's a banana! These guys kind of remind me of the... What is the Galen? They're monkeys, they're funny. Um, these guys kind of remind me of the, uh, unique Kong characters from, um, Jungle Beat. Or I think of the coolest part of that game, I think it, I don't know why I'm, like, enamored with, like, the unique Kong OCs from Jungle Beat. 
But they kinda remind me of those guys, because they're monkeys. I do. You don't see a lot of like extended Kong family members. So it's fun whenever they introduce like new like Kong characters. That's, why, that's probably the coolest part of Jungle Beat to me, like the new Kongs. I do think it's funny that Jungle Beat's plot is basically Donkey Kong wants to show how fucking strong he is. So he beats, so he goes to like it's like the other Kongs in that game I think aren't even like villains or anything. He just wants to prove how strong he is. There we go. Pick these up. Throw them at these bad boys. Throw them at these bad boys. These bad baboons. Donkey Kong becomes Goku for let's uh, yeah! He kinda does. I guess this is the thing. Oh fuck, I hit myself, I got hurt. Uh, uh, this phase isn't boring. I don't like this phase. It's one of the few times. This is like the weakest boss in the game. This phase is kind of boring. It's easy though, so like, I only usually takes one try. Now he's alone and angry. Is that the ghost? Did we fucking kill them? Oh, we just knocked them out. They're fucking dead. Fucking monkeys are dead. Donkey Kong is killed today. I always think about like enemies in games. Like, I, whenever I jump on a Goomba, I don't like thinking. I always think like, am I killing this Goomba or am I just knocking them out? I don't like the idea in my brain of Super Mario killing. I like. Oh no, Cranky. I like to pretend in my mind. I'm just knocking them out, so it's okay. happened to Snack World. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, I guess to explain, uh, Snack World is a level 5 game and it's very whatever, but um, its localization came out recently and it's not very good. It's got like fucking like Kofi D jokes. Oh fuck, I died. Yeah, pretty good. Oh well, that's fine. the cutscene. I like the loading, fucking banana rotation loading screen this game. I haven't talked about that yet, but I, I like it. I hit it get immediately. I have to remember, avoid the with the hammer and jump on them. Can't duck under them. It becomes Sonic the Hedgehog for a brief second. From Sega. Oh, fuck. They don't have. I wish I had more to say right now about this boss, but it's kinda. I'm facing a boss I consider kinda weak again. I hope Donkey Kong got to pause screen more for the next game. I can pause the game and learn about the Donkey Kong process. What's the lore behind these monkeys? Are they Kerbin Kong members, you think? Like, what? Like, that one Kong is an enemy from the original series. It's like a Kerbin Kong. Are these in the same boat? They banish Kongs out for revenge. Punished Kongs. I see chat's having a power zero snack roll, so I'm not involved in chat. Pay attention to the chat right now because I have to, like, to fight the boss. But yeah, snack roll's localization is pretty bad. I'm glad the 3 2 1 penguins are in the background watching right now. Oh, 
the fuck? He dodged my attack. He can't do that. Alright, luckily I do have Cranky in this last phase, though, so... I need to look it up. We got four hit points and the Crank Meister. the group again. I can do it. Not worried. We get, they may be ghosts, but I have the most. Hit him with some hammer form. Hit, hit him with some hammer form. Where do these monkeys get the fucking hammers? One more hit. the hammer. It's fine. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> Hit him. Oh, this is so good. Being able to, like, punch the shit out of the bosses at the end of this, like, the boss fights in this game is, like, peak of game design, I think. I think every game should let you, like, punch the shit out of the boss you just fought. It's so satisfying to, like, mash X and Y to, like, punch the shit out of the boss. Because they do a good job, like, at the start of the fight. They show you the boss, like, taunting Donkey Kong, like, get you, like, ooh, I want to get him. And at the end, you need to, like, fucking annihilate them. Anyway, um, I gotta go to the secret level. I don't remember what this one is. But I'll do it. Come on. You do items... I bought a Cranky Burl, this is a joke. Do I have it? Dude, yeah, inventory. I'll just break Cranky. Cranky is very useful for these levels, but I, I have it, I, him, so, you know, might as well. Might as well open Cranky. Dixie tends to be the ideal choice for this, these levels, if you can pick one. But you tend to die and lose her, anyway, so... <laughs> Cranky in the jungle! There he is. Oh! You get one this level. They use... Some levels give you them, some don't. Like these types. Oh, this one's the um, electric one. Actually, Cranky's pretty good for that, actually. You can, you can crank bounce. Cranky actually isn't the worst choice for this. See, it's um, neat. See, even these hard levels kind of have the escalation thing I was talking about. Like, that first one gives you kind of the idea. It's like a wide platform, like... Stuff, and now they're already ramping that up. Even like the hard levels have good game design. Good job, the game design Donkey Kong, who made this game all by himself. I think I remember this being on the easier side of these, but I don't want to jinx myself when I never really die and embarrass myself. I don't know what's back there, but I'm too scared to risk it. <laughs> Glad game design. <laughs> That's why they removed Chunky Kong. If they put Chunky Kong in the game again, he'll have bad game design. I've talked about this before, but I think it's so funny that um, Chunky and Kitty are the two Kong member family members who like disappear, and they're the two that are related, like canonically related. Despite never appearing in the same game. So I like the notion in my mind, like they were both banished at the same time for being related or somehow. Ah, oh, fuck God. Well, thank you. You did your job. I'm glad those fuckers are- How dare you? How, after all Kitty Kong has done for us and John Cartwright from Game Explain. You could duck under that. Chunky did nothing wrong besides bad game design. 
What's the consensus on DK64 in the chat? Because I know that game is a very mixed, like, opinion ratio. I've heard all sorts of opinions on Donkey Kong 64. I don't know uh, people. What, what kind of, like, the overall consensus it is on it? It's weird. It's okay. DK64 is fucked up. It's definitely, it's definitely a little fucked. My favorite thing about DK64 is how they originally planned to only use characters from the first Donkey Kong Country in it. And the idea did- Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> that idea didn't go through. <laughs> so like, the game is now just kind of permanently missing Dixie Kong for an early idea. I'll bring, I'll bring Dixie this time in honor of her. I remember DK64 because I watched a video once from like a YouTuber about hitting all the like N64 platformers up against each other. I remember because I think Donkey Kong 64 won. I think it was Donkey Kong at first, um, Banjo in second, Mario in third, and then um, Conquer in last. It's very funny to like remember that because now Donkey Kong 64 is a lot more like mixed opinion. I don't disagree about Conquer being the worst one, though. <laughs> I think you can make an argument for, like, Banjo 64 being your favorite for sure. But I definitely don't disagree with Conquer's kind of the worst out of, like, the N64 platformer Nintendo group. Once you get past the jokes of from Conquer, there isn't much else, admittedly. It's novel for the time, but... I wouldn't, yeah, I guess, yeah, I don't even think Conquer's like a platformer first, to be honest. It's more like a gag game to first. This is the best way to put it. Banjo is definitely, I would probably agree with Banjo being the best of, like, the group. I, if you, I think people have, like, a Mario 64 controls, like, make people love it. I think I can understand that. Like, Mario 64 is, like, incredibly tight controls and game design. Makes it a lot of people's favorites. So I can, I can understand that. But Banjo is, like, a lot of stuff I like. Like, world stuff. I feel like you're in a world. I love that kind of stuff. Also, Kazooie is the most powerful character of all time. Kazooie has to restrain the Banjo's backpack, or she will become unstoppable. Honestly, I like all the, like, the, the three main Banjo characters a lot. I like Banjo, Grunty, and Kazooie a lot, like, as characters. Grunty's, like, a great villain, I think. I like the fact that Grunty's just kind of disgusting. It's fun. <laughs> oh, shit. The like, angriest I've sound this entire playthrough of Donkey Kong. Banjo to Smash, but not Mario 64. <laughs> Alright, third time, third time's the charm. I got this time. I'm in the rhythm. I got the Kong. I think it's fucked up. Nuts and bolts implies bottles fucking ran over his wife. Conquer is very ambitious for like how much they try to do, but it definitely, it's definitely kind of weak as a game once you get past. If, like you said, Conquer's enjoyment definitely depends like how funny you think it is. Like if you're not really into like the humor of the game, which I am not, admittedly, I think it's okay. But I, I would honestly think say I think Banjo's funnier. <laughs> It's an. I think Conquer's more interesting as like a game than it is like fun to play. I would say like like when it was released and like why it is that way. Yep. 
story behind it's like a lot more interesting to me than the game, I would say. There's a few games like that, I think. Not that I can even at the top of my head, because, you know, why would I ever have examples of anything? I've never had... <laughs> is it, uh... I remember this wrong. The guy who voices Donkey Kong, I think, does, um... Other stuff at Nintendo 2. I might be remembering that wrong. I think Donkey Kong actually gets new voice clips pretty frequently compared to like Yoshi, who only gets like. If you didn't know this, um. Yoshi was using the same voice clips for like. Until. From Yoshi's Story to Mario Galaxy 2, they were using the same voice clips and they didn't record any more again until Cart 8. He voices Ganondorf. Okay. Yeah, that's also what he does. Mario himself tends to get the most, like, new voice clips, like Mario and Luigi, because Charles is almost always around. But then, like, Yoshi has been using the same voice clips, used the same voice clips for, like, a long time. <laughs> like when you don't like get all the puzzle pieces so like Dixie and like Donkey Kong would just like look at you like Well <laughs> Well <laughs> Now what? Grant's Donkey Kong voice clips are very good, I agree. Alright, um I think that's We've been going for like at least two hours. I think that's a solid stopping spot right here. At the start of the new world. But um, probably gonna be it for Donkey Kong now. Um, S Smash 64 uses them. That's about the only one I know. I think Melee. <laughs> and Tulsa too. There's a few weird ones. But um, thanks for joining tonight. Thanks for everyone who came. I did almost do two whole worlds, yes. <laughs> Next time I'll probably do the next two worlds and the final will probably be the final world. May Kong be with everyone tonight. Thank you for coming.